We now continue with Sean's exclusive interview with Governor Sarah Palin. You've talked about, and Senator McCain has talked about, you want to eliminate earmarks, that you want to reduce government spending, that you want to keep taxes low, uh, you want to reform government. You've used the term reform a lot. John, Senator McCain has used the term reform a lot. Many people have gone to Washington, and they've made these promises, especially when it comes to cutting spending, and it doesn't happen. How, how do you make this happen Look how partisan it is in Washington right now. How do you get that accomplished? Yeah, it's gridlock, and, and that's ridiculous. That's why we don't have an energy policy. That's why there hasn't been the reform of the abuse of the earmark process. And real reform is tough, and you do ruffle feathers along the way. But John McCain has that streak of independence in him that I think is very, very important in America today in our leadership. But I have that within me also, and that's John, why John McCain tapped me to be a team of mavericks, of independents coming in there without the allegiances to that cronyism, to that good old boy system. I'm certainly a Washington outsider, and, and I'm proud of that because I think that that is what we need also as a team member in this, um, on this new team promising the reform. Reform that actually happens is tough, and you can't just talk about it, and you can't just talk about your years of experience in a system, a bureaucratic system. Uh, you have to show example, and what I've done is have been able to show example as a mayor cutting taxes every year that I was in office, as as a governor now suspending our, our fuel tax recently, um, getting our, ha our uh, handle on the state's budget in Alaska, growing the surplus so that we could return that surplus right back to the people of Alaska. Which the, we've let's go had. into that. The people of Alaska get, for example, there's no income tax, there's no sales tax in Alaska. There are in individual communities. In, uh, but no state sales tax. Correct. The average citizen, if I was a resident of Alaska, you would write me a check every year. For $2,069? Well, depending on how the stock market's doing over the last five years on average. And then you, and you also gave recently a check, an extra check for $1,200? I did because the price of a barrel of oil is so high right now that state coffers are growing, but the family's checkbook is, is being decimated because of the high cost I of to, energy. I have to move to Alaska. I'm, uh, <laughs> New York taxes are killing me. So. Well, what we're doing up there, though, is returning a share of resource development dollars back to the people who own the resources and our constitution up there mandates that as you develop resources is to be for the maximum benefit of the people not the corporations not the government but the people of Alaska. Senator Obama on the campaign trail and, and Senator Ob uh, Biden as well they often criticize John McCain that well his plan is he's going to continue the policies of tax cuts for the wealthy. For those that maybe buy into that class warfare agreement or think why why shouldn't the rich pay more my question to you is the converse why does everyone benefit if the rich pays less or if everybody pays less in taxes why is that good for the economy that, that's a great question and everybody does benefit when government takes less from the people no matter what their income bracket is uh, because our, our businesses then and our families are able to keep more of what they're earning reinvest in um, what they have as priorities that's how jobs are created and that's how we're going to grow our economy but uh, let, let me talk really quickly about our opponents position on tax Barack Obama has had 94 opportunities to be on the side of the American taxpayer and 94 times he has chosen to be on the opposite side. He could have either voted for tax cuts or at least not for tax increases and 94 times he has chosen, I believe, the wrong position on those. And that's going to be a key issue in this campaign. Things have gotten pretty heated in the campaign trail and especially in the last two days. There were two weeks where I think you were the focus of the attack. Now it seems that the focus of the attack is Senator McCain. Do you think these attacks and ratcheting up these attacks by Barack Obama, I don't know if you had a chance to see his speech yesterday, and by Senator Biden, do you think these attacks will be effective? Uh, I think the American people are getting down to the facts and they're looking at voting records and they're looking at allegiances and they're looking at um, what a, a vision is that each candidate holds and is sharing with the American people and there is such stark 
contrast between Barack Obama and Senator John McCain and happy to talk about those contrasts because this is what it's all about. People are interested in what the issues are that are affecting their daily lives, Americans are. They want to know that government is going to be put back on the side of the people and that it will be their will implemented in their government. The people of America realize that Inherently, all political power is inherent in the people, and government is to be um, implemented, policies are, on behalf of the people and the will that they desire that their government engage in. Uh, it, we can't underestimate the wisdom of the people of America. They're, they're seeing through the rhetoric, and they're seeing through uh, a lot of the political cheap shots also, and they're getting down to the facts and the voting records that are going to show that stark contrast. Story tonight worst persons in the world. The bronze to Rupert Murdoch. You may be worried about AIG or Lehman Brothers or WAMU or whatever is next. Not Roop, who said today, our times are good for big companies. Our Comforting thought for people trying to decide whether or not to withdraw their money from an account at an endangered bank and trying to figure out if there are any banks that aren't endangered. You can sleep well knowing News Corp is safe. Our silver, uh, Bill the Clown, reading the GOP talking points, attacking Michelle Obama, describing her by using the word angry the five Chronicle separate times. The controversial wife this. of the Democratic candidate, Michelle Obama. Chronicle Facts. Mrs. Obama was born on January 17, 1964, in Chicago. Her father worked for the city. He died from MS in 1991. Her mother worked as a secretary. She still lives on the south side of Chicago. She has one sibling, her brother, who coaches the Oregon State University basketball team. She graduated from Princeton and has a law degree from Harvard. She married Barack Obama in 1992. They have two young girls. Joining us now from Washington, Michelle Otis, a columnist for HumanEvents.com. And here in the studio, Rebecca Johnson, who wrote a profile of Mrs. Obama for Vogue magazine. So you spent some time with her. How much time? Um, a few hours. Uh, Just a few hours mm -hmm. with her? Half a day. Um, how did you find her in person? Was she engaging? Uh, I found her lovely, actually. Very mm -hmm. bright, um, very thoughtful, and, uh, you know, a, a, an impressive person. Intelligent. She was great. I, now, I was impressed. I have a lot of people who call me on the radio and say she looks angry. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have to say there's some validity to that. She mm -hmm. looks like an angry woman. Mm -hmm. um, did you ask Don't her Don't think they that? meant about you, too. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm not running for... Uh, I'm not going to be the first lady, I hope not, anyway. Um, the perception is that she's angry in some quarters. Mm -hmm. Valid? Well... Mm, I, I, they say she looks angry because of maybe the cast of her eyebrows or something like that. But no, I don't find her to be angry. I think what happens is that we expect women to be cheerful and happy all the time in that kind of television personality kind of way. And she's not like that. She's a thoughtful person. She's not going to... Warm and fuzzy? No. Not warm and fuzzy? No. Even to you, she's trying to win over as an author of a piece. Yeah, you know, she was not trying to win me over in any really? way. Really? No, not at all. Because, no, that's interesting, because <laughs> yeah, most well, people, when they're talking to somebody who's going to write about them, want to yeah. win you over. She didn't want to win you over? No, not at all. Why not? And it's interesting, because I actually inter I've also interviewed Sarah Palin, and she was very friendly and very... Tried to win you over, right? Yeah. But Michelle wasn't trying to win me over with a kind of a false chumminess. She is somebody who speaks her mind and stands on her own, and whether I liked her or not, I don't think was particularly important to her now. Okay, interesting. Now, did you find out uh, about the angry woman thing, Rebecca? Uh, I'm sorry, Michelle. Uh, did you, is there any validity to that, or is that a urban myth? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's an urban myth. I think we all can tell just by appearances and, and speeches and the way that Michelle has personified herself that she's not warm and fuzzy. We know that about her. All right, but neither uh, is Hillary she's, Clinton, she's an, you know. Um, absolutely, and I think that she, we could compare her to a, in, in the way I've tracked her career and her resume, I would say she is a stealth Hillary Clinton. Okay, so you would compare her more to Hillary Clinton than somebody who's angry with her country because obviously that played into the remark about, uh, and people can make up their own remi minds about that remark again. But she said it, she apologized for saying it, you can make up your mind. Mm -hmm. So all in all, your summation, your personality profile of her is what? I think she's an accomplished woman. I think that it goes without saying that she's, you know, she's done a good job in her career, but I think that it's okay for the media to question uh, some of her ethical choices in her career as well as guests well. disagreed with him and said she was not angry. But as ever, he stepped on that sideshow Bob Rake of his. Now, I have a lot of people who call me on the radio and say she looks angry. And I have to say there's some validity to that. She looks like an angry woman. Did you ask her about that? 
One of his guests then replied, Don't they say that about you, too? <laughs> Bill O was flummoxed. He started to answer, Yeah, but I'm not running for... Then suddenly realized what he was saying, and he added, I'm not going to be the first lady.